Hello guys, today we have a code review of a Laravel project by Justin Byrne called Mealing. He suggested that on Twitter when I requested for code reviews for repositories for code reviews, and this is a Laravel project to basically manage meals. So if you log in with admin, here's the dashboard where you can manage the menus, manage some meals, for example meals, and then you go create meal. There's a form, then ingredients, which can be managed by admin. Here, list all ingredients or add new ingredient, for example, sugar or something, create ingredient. Part of that is powered by Livewire, but generally all the project is Laravel. And in this video, I will both show you something to learn from, like events and listeners, and like creating your own custom validation rule. But also I will point out a few things that could be done better or written in a shorter code. And also this video will have part two or maybe even part three and four, because some topics I've separated into separate videos, like Livewire, like Eloquent Filters and Spotty Permissions. So subscribe to the channel to get all of those later. But for now, let's generally see the repository, the code and things I've noticed. First thing I wanted to show you is custom validation rule. An example of that is managing your password on your profile. And if your password doesn't match with the current password, doesn't matter if all the other validation rules are passing, you would get user details don't match our records. So checking the current password is done with a custom validation rule. There is a file called app rules current password rule and you can generate any custom rule with an artisan command. So for example, PHP artisan make rule some rule. So it generates the rule with empty constructor and with two methods passes and the message. And for password rule, Justin added his own conditions like checking the hash check of the password. And if it doesn't match with the value of the field, we return false. Great. And using of that rule is in the form request of change password request. Rules are current password required and then this custom validation rule. And then that change password request class is used in the profile controller method password as a form request validation. So that's how you can generate the validation rule for any rule that is outside of default Laravel validation. One thing I would probably do a bit better is instead of having if and false, you can just return. So return true or false return if hash check is true or false like this. So one line return hash check, it returns true or false. As you can see, the bool is the result of that method and bool is what is expected from passes method. The next thing that I wanted to show you is events and listeners. So in this example, administrator approves the user and when the user is approved, the email should be sent. And it is done by using in the Laravel model of user static function boot. And after parent boot, there is an updated method being kind of tracked and you can do that with model observers as well, but this is done in the model itself. So if the email is verified by user themselves, then there is an event of user verified. But in this case, we are taking a look at approved. So if there is an approved method happening, there is an event new user approved. And what happens after the event? The event is being listened. So why this pattern is called events and listeners. There are two sides of the story. Events is whenever something happens and you just announce to the whole system that the event happened. And then the listener class or multiple classes listen to that event and perform whatever you want. So there is a file called event service provider where you list what listener classes should listen for which events. So in our case, both of those are listened by listener classes. And in this case, send user approved notification class is a listener class. And in the handle method of user approved, there is a notification sent to the user and notification class is approved user, which sends the email message, your account has been approved. So events and listeners are kind of a pattern of separating the logic from controllers or from your models. So the main event happens in the controller or in the model in this case, and then separately separate other classes watch for the changes. Side note, both of those examples are available on my Laravel examples com recently launched project. So custom validation rules has six examples. So six repositories and then events and listeners have seven examples. Now let's move on to other parts of the code. 
Now I want to show you something about database seeders and migrations. So this is not good or bad thing to learn from or to fix. It's just different from what I've seen so far elsewhere and what I've done myself. So there is a file called admin user seeder, for example, where I found the credentials for the main admin. And there are other seeders for allergens, for menu, for permissions and other stuff. And I was expecting to find it all in database seeder, like listing all the classes. But it's not the case. And there are even two weird things here. First, the underlining of those classes mean that they don't exist, undefined class. And if you compare those names to these names, apparently those indeed don't exist. None of those classes exist. So there's allergen seeder, but here's allergen permission seeder, which doesn't exist. So where those seeds are used? Apparently in migrations directly. So if we go, for example, to create allergens table migration file, there's an allergens table being created and also directly from the migration, Justin decided to call the allergen seeder like this. So create the object and run it. An allergen seeder looks like this. So if we go for, for example, admin user seeder, let's take a look where it is found in the project. And we have a separate migration, add new users to user table, which only calls the seed. So this is kind of a weird behavior. Maybe Justin, if you're watching this video, comment below why you did it this way. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to call the seeds from migrations directly by initiating their classes. But generally in this project, the thought is when you run migrations, all the data is seeded automatically with migrations. And finally, a few things that I would advise to improve to make the code a bit shorter and maybe more readable. So for example, in allergen controller in store method, there's this sentence allergen create and then name equals name and icon equals icon. This can be shortened, especially when you use form request class, which validates both of those fields. They are both available in one array called request validated. This is the method that would return the same thing. So all the fields that are listed in the form request class, but be careful with that. If you miss some validation, for example, this then request validated would contain only icon and not the name. If the fields listed here are different in your case from these rules, then don't use request validated. It's only for identical amount of fields, but I do advise to keep them identical. And also a similar example, which is even more screaming for a little bit of refactoring recipe controller, same thing, user recipes create, and then all of those are listed here. And you can use request validated because probably all those fields are here. So you can do instead of that request validated in all fairness to defend Justin, he did use request validated in other controllers. Maybe he just didn't get to those controllers, which I've checked just now. He is still actively working on the repository from what I've seen in the last days, a lot of commits. So check for new changes as well, maybe even after this video. Next, I want to give an advice to shorten this destroy method of ingredient controller. And I see a few things to improve here. First, two abort if statements with the same result of 403 code, which is forbidden if something goes wrong. So this can be combined into one abort if. So if this match or gate denies like this, probably like this, and then we don't need the second abort if, right? So if gate denies or this condition isn't met, then 403. And then another thing, and I see it quite often in the repositories in the open source repositories, this calling the relationship where you don't really need the relationship, in fact, so ingredient user ID, and if we go to the ingredient here, user is a belongs to relationship. But there's also a field user ID, which powers that relationship. So we don't need to check that user at all here, we can just call user ID. And that would prevent potential queries to the database. Because sometimes when calling the relationship, we do have another new query to the database. So this is kind of the final version of the method that I would suggest. 
And final thing is in the recipe controller store method where Justin tries to use many to many relationship and attach ingredients to newly created recipe, which is cool. We create the recipe and then for each of the ingredients that we get from the request, we attach the ingredient with quantity with quantities that we also get from request, which is fine. But I don't like this sentence. So for each of the ingredients, we search for that in the database. And first thing, what if we don't find it? So there's no validation, for example, it should probably be something like if ingredient, then we attach. So that's one advice, one piece of advice like this. But also to the attach, we don't need to pass the full object. It's just enough to pass the ID. So we don't even need to find that in the database. Instead of that, we could pass this to here. And then we delete all of that. And this is the final sentence. And similar down below, finding the allergen and attaching that we don't need to have find we just pass ID here. And we don't have another query to the database for each of the ingredient or each of allergen. And that's it for this video of Justin's project mealing, but I will continue with that repository and in separate videos, I'm planning to show you such things as Livewire. So I've opened the composer JSON of that project and will show you what it uses. So Livewire, then there is an interesting project of filtering query strings. So for example, when you search for something and your URL contains like sort by something, filter by something, so this package helps with that. And there's also another package by Spati doing similar things. So I want to demo those. And also I want to dig deeper how Laravel permission works in that project. And I want to comment on what's inside. I'm not sure if I will make all those three videos, maybe some of them will be questionable. But still, if you want to get them, subscribe to my channel because I keep shooting daily videos with reviewing of the repositories, some advice, Laravel tips and stuff like that. So join more than 60,000 subscribers. And if you want to support my daily mission of daily videos, check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now, admin panel generator, my courses or live wire kit. And see you guys in other videos.